mean, it, wow, look at that deer. Hey, this is Russ, back on the road again. Yeah, I'm taking the Magic Cycle out on the new uh, 20 amp hour battery. Hey, get a load of this. I wanted to show you something here. Take a look at the ground. See that bicycle sign? <laughs> yeah, they just added that to this street. Now, is that going to make any difference to anybody? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but they're basically saying that uh, bikes are using the street more. And uh, cars should be aware of it. It's true. I, I see quite a few uh, bike riders on this road. So uh, yeah, all this is brand new. They've they've added it to the uh, to the street to let cars know that uh, you got to share this with the bikes. Yes, indeed. All right, I'm gonna go here. So where are we gonna go today? Well, we're just gonna go around the three mile path today because um, it's early enough in the morning. I, um, I'm coming out here because, what time is it right now? Let me, let me take a look at the clock here. 8.09, 10 o'clock, I have the kid coming over to paint the fence. Yes, we are still dealing with the fence. <laughs> so how far has he gotten? Well, he has gotten to um, two thirds of the fence being done. He has three sides of paint. He's painted two of the three. He's got another side to paint. Now, the reason this thing is dragged out for so long is heat. That's one reason, okay? I, I'm not gonna force the kid to work in 90 plus degree weather. Second thing is rain. Rain's always pushing us off. <laughs> Good morning. Um, he has another job. He has a regular job, works for a hardware store, local hardware store. He has soccer. He's, uh, yeah, he's busy. When he took on this job, both he and I did not realize how much harder this job was. <laughs> now, originally, we were thinking we should spray paint this uh, fence, but we kept thinking that, well, you know, if you spray it, it might go over on the other side of the fence to the neighbor's side. We don't want the mess to be all over the place, but we made him uh, hand paint it, and that's what took us forever. And of course, that that fence is just sucking up all of the paint, as we said. Good morning. And so, um, this final side, he's going to try to spray paint it. His dad apparently has a spray painter, and supposedly his dad has shown him how to use it, it's shown him how to th thin out the paint if necessary all that stuff so he's gonna attempt to spray paint this other side let's just hope it doesn't uh, doesn't mess up the neighbor's side what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a tarp behind what he's spraying and hoping it doesn't go over to their side of the fence now we could paint both sides of that fence as we did on the other one but we decided not to do both sides on that side because our neighbor actually prefers a more natural look we're painting this fence white so uh, I told my neighbor that we are, I'm not gonna paint his side of the fence. We're gonna leave his side more natural. And uh, we're only gonna paint our side of the fence that we see in our backyard. So he's only got one more side to finish and that'll be it. Anyway, yeah, I said the word anyway and didn't say anyways. Now I woke up this morning and uh, one of our loyal, loyal um, viewers reminded me to stop saying anyways because there is no such word as anyways. I know that. <laughs> Just comes out that way. Yeah, there, you know, there's a, there was one word that there was another guy that I knew always used uh, incorrectly. I can't recall the word, but he always added an R to the end of the word. And I think a lot of people maybe back out east say this word and kind of put an R to the end of it. I just can't recall the name or the, the, the word itself, but he would always add that little R at the end of it. And it drove me nuts. But that's, that's what he would say. I'm gonna move on this side, it's too muddy over there. Um, so I always used the word anyways with an S at the end of it. 
knowing full well that there's no such word as anyways. But I always just say that because that's just how it always comes out. <laughs> so yeah, I'll try my best to try to not say anyways with an S. And if I'm gonna say anyway, try to drop the S. I mean, think about it, for 63 years, I've probably been saying that. Okay, I never said it when I was one year old. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, okay? So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was driving her nuts. It was driving her nuts. She can't handle it anymore. She had to, had to let me know. Yep. And, uh, yes, I love you guys too. She says, I love you anyways, but <laughs> stop saying anyways. <laughs> I hear ya. Okay, I'm gonna try. You know, sometimes it takes somebody pointing something like that out to you to get you to stop doing something. Thank you very much for that. I've always thought about it, but it always comes out with the nest at the end. It's just the way you say it. What you're used to saying, that is. Okay, alright, since we're on the topic of pet peeves, let me give you my pet peeve, okay? It's the word I. Alright, you might know what I'm talking about here. People tend, well, they cut down all this stuff here. Well, they cut it all back. <laughs> um, I didn't expect them to cut that far back. They didn't do all of it. They left this side. And then they cut some of this back over here. What, what's up with that? I don't, I don't get it. Um, what were they going to say? Oh, the word I. Okay. Too many people use the word I incorrectly, all right? Like, uh, um, my friend and I would be correct. You wouldn't say my friend and me, right? So people have been using um, the word I incorrectly a lot. They're, they'll say things like, um, Man, I can't even come up with the right sentence to use it because I don't do it incorrectly. All right, here, here's how you use the word I or me properly. Take out everything else and listen to what it sounds like. Like, uh, or, or incorrectly using the word me too, for instance, me and my friends. It's never me and my friends. It's always the other person first and then you, all right? So instead of saying me and my, me and my friends went to the grocery store, you would actually have to say, my friend and I went to the grocery store. And we know that the word I is properly used there because if you take out your friend, it would just say, I went to the grocery store. It would not be, me went to the grocery store. Get it? <laughs> All right, so we know that uh, in that case, the word me is proper and it comes after your friend. It doesn't come before your friend, right? So the word I, um, The grocery store is appealing to my friend and I. That would be incorrect. <laughs> the, the grocery store is appealing to my friend and I. That's wrong. It's, it's Take out your friend, you would never say, the grocery store is appealing to I, right? So the proper word there would be me. It would be, the grocery store is appealing to me. And I find so many people throw in the word I instead of me because they want to sound um, like they know what they're saying. Well, you're not knowing what you're saying because you're saying it wrong. You are murdering the Queen's English. <laughs> okay, I got that phrase from the Three Stooges, okay? <laughs> All right, this guy's going really fast. So he's got an e-bike, yeah e-bike with the triangle battery in there. I don't know what brand it was, but man, he was zipping down this thing. All right, let's move forward here. So yeah, use the record, uh, the, use the correct word, all right? Just take out the other person and that'll give you an indication whether you should use I or me. Yeah, in that case, uh, the grocery store is appealing to me not appealing to I. So you would not say the grocery store is appealing to my friend and I. It would be to my friend and me. <laughs> that goose was looking at me. He had his mouth open. It was ready to attack. Yeah, the Canadian geese. All right, you Canadians. 
Take your geese back. <laughs> yeah, these geese flew down. They flew down south and never left. So now we have a ton of Canadian geese here in the Chicago area. You know, when, when I first moved out of Chicago and moved out to California, we didn't have geese. I don't recall ever seeing geese out here. We came back eight years later and there's a ton of geese. All right, it's been quite a while now. Quite a while, not quite a whiles with an S. <laughs> That's been quite a while now. See, this, this is the problem. We all say things incorrectly. Drives other people crazy. Yeah, learn to say things right. Russ is always right, told you guys. <laughs> Even when he's wrong. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm taking out the, uh, the new battery and running it through its paces. Again, I need to find out how far can I go with this battery. Now, I've been throttling quite a bit today. Um, I've put it in pedal assist level three, which I have moved up in power levels. I think it's sitting at 53%, because usually I am in pedal assist level three, and you guys know how fast I usually go. So I had upped my, uh, I've upped my game. I went from an assist level of one to five, as you know, because it comes with uh, zero to seven on this, uh, on this bike. I went to one to five, and then I've uh, changed it back, morning, changed it back to uh, one to seven this time. I never put on zero, because I never do anything at zero. I cannot ride this uh, bike at zero, there's no way. So uh, <laughs> I went to one to seven, gave myself some in-between power levels, all right? Because I know sometimes um, one to five, when I hit the next level, it jolts you a little bit too much. Now, oh, let me say this real quickly too. I know that many of you have gotten your new Magicycle bikes and Magicycle um, Cruiser Pro bikes because they've been shipping out Cruisers and Cruiser Pros now. There's a ton of them in the warehouse. I saw photos of it. So uh, yeah, you should be getting your bikes now or within the next few days, all right? But uh, at least one of you mentioned to me that uh, the, the bike almost jolted you right off of the bike when you hit that pedal level assist. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. You need to make that modification. Watch the second review of my, uh, of my Magicycle uh, bike review, okay? All right, I'm, I'm going up this hill and this person is On your left, thank you. Yeah, my bell is pretty loud. <laughs> uh, so anyways, yeah, we went over the hill pretty easy. She had a regular bike, so she's uh, suffering through it a little bit. But anyways, uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, can't get that S out of there. Yeah, the bikes are, are, are being uh, shipped at this point. You, you need to drop down that level if you're not used to it. If, if this is your first e-bike, you definitely need to drop it down before you even get on that bike, I'm telling you. Or it'll, it'll jolt you and throw you off the bike because it is that powerful. I think, I think the first level of assist is like 40%, something like that. It's, it's way too high. You know, I wish Magicycle would just back off on it a little bit, but that's how they ship out. So go on to the second review of the Magicycle Cruiser and take a look at how I've set up the uh, the menu. It tells you how to do it too. I tell you how to do it. So be careful with your new bikes, all right? Because it will uh, it'll jolt you if you're not used to it. So I have not been out riding much in the last couple of days. I went, I took this bike out, uh, as you might know, uh, to te test out the battery. And uh, what, what did we get? We got, was it 42 miles, I think? Something like that, 42 miles. Now, if you look at the Magicycle Cruiser Pro site, I think they claim 60 to 80 miles of range. Okay, now you gotta remember too, Magicycle is not the only one that does this, everybody does it in the industry. That's more than realistic if you think about it because if they're calling it 60 to 80 and I was only getting 42, 
How did that happen? Well, it happened because I'm not riding at pedal assist level one. <laughs> I'm at level three. Okay, now level three for me, like I said, is like, I think it's like 52, 53%, something like that. It's quite a bit. But if you think about it, their level one would be at 40%. So my question is, is are they measuring it based on a 40% level or is it even lower than that, than that? I'm thinking it might even be even lower than that when they got that baseline of 60 miles because I don't think I could get 60 miles anywhere close based on the way I ride. I only dropped myself back down to level 2. I don't remember where 2, I think 2 on my bike is set for about 35% maybe, 32%, something like that. That's what I'm thinking, can't remember. Yeah, it feels really slow to me, I gotta be at three. <laughs> so if I'm always at three, I'm never gonna get what they're getting. All right, we're gonna cross this way. All right. And then we're gonna turn and go the other way. <laughs> That's the only way to do it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't think I'll ever get 60 miles out of this. There's no way I will. So I got 42 miles last time, doing a pedal assist level three and throttling every now and then. And then I did heavy throttling when I was on the road with, uh, with a lot of cars, got 42 miles out of it. And then the battery finally died. I mean, I, I actually rode it until the thing died out. Didn't have enough power to even to go any further. I wasn't, I wasn't that far away from my home, but I still needed to change out the battery just to get back. Um, yeah, someone asked me if, if I can ride this bike without the battery so I could pedal my way back home and the answer would be absolutely not. <laughs> I can't do it. I cannot do it. I tried. I, I literally tried. I was not that far from home. I was probably maybe three or four blocks away from home. I couldn't do it. It was too heavy. I had two batteries. I'm bouncing all over the place here. The road is kind of beat up. Um, I had two batteries with me. I had uh, all my tools and everything in the front basket, which I still have right now. I did not strap on a second battery in the back today. I'm not going to ride it until it, until it dies. I have to get back for the kid to be able to, <laughs> to start painting the fence at 10 o'clock. Um, that's why I'm not going too far out because I need to get back for him. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't ride it. There's no way, I, I cannot pedal this bike by itself. It's too heavy. Uh, let me say something else too. I, I, I know that people have said that um, they are, they're not buying e-bikes. I mean, remember the senior video? The video that you guys probably all saw and started watching me. Um, all right. I get a lot of comments on that video and the video, um, the, one of the big comments about people who don't want to buy an e-bike, they, they usually tell me why they don't want to do it. They do mention the fact that the bikes are very heavy and they can't imagine riding a bike that heavy. Let, let me say this real quickly. You don't notice the weight of the bike when you're riding it, right? You really don't. Um, where, you'll, where you'll notice the weight of the bike is when you stop and you lean a little bit, then you notice that the bike is kind of heavy as it leans towards you, all right? Or if you have to carry that bike up and down stairs or something like that to get it out the door, that's when you're going to notice it. But in the actual ride, you, you don't notice the weight. It's, it's not like a regular bike. A regular bike, if it was this heavy, you can't pedal it. Like I said, I can't pedal this bike, it's too heavy. I can't do it at zero. So they say, I'm not buying an e-bike, I can't pedal it. Um, you've never ridden an e-bike, obviously, then, because you can ride an e-bike. If this bike was 200 pounds, I could ride it. Look, people ride motorcycles, how are they able to ride that heavy thing? Because that thing's moving for you with the motor. You don't notice that weight, all right? 
the weight only becomes a factor when you're not riding the bike and um, or if you like I said if you have to move it up and down stairs to get it out of the door and you know but you know many of us leave our bikes in the garage it's level with the ground so you're probably not going to notice it much I have noticed that uh, my Magicycle Cruiser is now feeling like the Rad Rover. Uh, when I carry both batteries, and I've got all the stuff in the front here, and I'm carrying a lock and all that kind of stuff, it's it's quite heavy now. So that adds into the the loss of the mileage. Yeah, every little thing starts adding into your your mileage range, cuts it back. So. Yeah, you want to get rid of as much stuff as you can. Um, it doesn't affect the, the feel of riding, um, you know, once you're moving, but it does affect your battery range. It affects, uh, you know, lifting the bike. And if I, if I had to lift this bike, you know, sometimes when I stop at the stop signs, not stop signs, at the stop lights, I have to re-maneuver my bike, get it ready to, to make a turn or something. Uh, it's it's a lot heavier now because I've got everything that's in the front here to have to lift up to lift the front of this bike up to, to make that move so um, Yeah <laughs> That's the way it is morning All right, let's cross the most dangerous road I've told you guys before that this this uh, this intersection needs something to stop this traffic. And I know they don't want to do it because they don't want to stop the traffic. They would back things up. But really one of those push button things uh, for the crosswalks would be very helpful here. Considering many people use this bike path now. More people are out on bikes. I'm sure over the years they've never needed it. Uh, but now with so many people using it, they really need to do it. Okay, we're gonna go. One car let me through, so that's all it takes. One car lets you through, you can get through. <laughs> that's all they need. A little push button thing, stop the traffic for maybe 10 seconds. That's all you need. It'll prevent someone from getting killed out here. Oh, by the way, I told you guys about um, the, um, the windscreens that I ordered from my microphone from um, AliExpress from China. Yeah, those didn't work out. They're not as good as the big heavy windscreen that I have on my, on my um, microphone normally. I, 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 I was looking for windscreens because I had lost another one, right? Well, I found that one. <laughs> yeah, it was in the garage. I pulled my car out and there it was underneath the car where, where the car normally parks. So it had fallen off and rolled over there. It's a round ball, a little round ball. So uh, yeah, I, I can't use the cheap windscreens because um, you guys hear nothing but wind noise if we did that. So I gotta pay the big bucks to get better windscreens. These things are not cheap. These are uh, four little windscreens for $20. <laughs> Five dollars for one of these little round pieces of foam that's only like, what is it, a half an inch? Circle? Half an inch? I don't even think it's three quarters of an inch. Yeah, how do they get that much money for it? But you gotta pay the price if you wanna get the performance, right? So, anyway, <laughs> anyway, I will uh, order more of those if we get down to losing more of these I just got to be careful um, it gets knocked off very easily so. so how's the path looking out here after a rain it's not too bad weather right now is the upper 60s I have my black shirt on it's keeping my arms a little warmer I think without it it would be cold the one time I went out there without it I really regretted it because it was really kind of chilly it's about the same temperature as it was that one time and um, yeah I don't feel it as much right now so yeah it's it's good to have the 
have the shirt on. Now, wind goes through the shirt pretty easily. That's the whole point of it. It's very lightweight. But even so, it does make a difference. So while I am throttling here, um, I've been trying to keep the watts usage as low as I can in the three to four hundred range, three to four hundred watt range. Full power uh, usage of the throttle would eat up the battery, of course. Now I'm not going to ride the entire time. I'm going to end up stopping, and I'll pick it up again another day. But what I like about the cruiser is the trip meter over here does not reset unless I hit reset. So I can actually just leave it as it is, put back the battery again and try another day and continue on and know what kind of mileage I was getting. Now, if I wanted to get that 60 to 80 mile number, I could, I could pedal at a lower assist level, but that wouldn't be real, realistic for me. See, that, that's the thing. You, you can't go based on what the manufacturer tells you, 60 to 80 miles, and expect you're going to get 60 to 80 miles if you're not riding the way that they're measuring. I don't ride that way. I, you all know I ride relatively quickly. I'm going to ride on PAS3, so my measurement has to be, what am I really getting at PAS3? That's what you need to know. Then you know if you can take it and go farther. And I, I made a determination that I cannot take the Magic Cycle Cruiser to the Botanic Gardens. Garden, no S. <laughs> yeah, we all say things wrong. Um, yeah, it's a little too far. It's 60 miles round trip. And uh, if this bike is giving me 42, based on how I ride, the other original battery, if I ride on PAS3 and the like, I can probably get about 23, 24 miles. So if you add it up, um, 42 plus 23, what does that come out to be? That comes out to be the, the fact that you should be able to make it to the Botanic Gardens, right? Garden. But it's a little too close for comfort. Remember 42, when I hit 42, that battery just cut out on me, all right? And I was being really conservative towards the end of that ride to get to that 42. So it's too close. I mean, you, you might run out of battery three or four blocks away from home. And like I told you, I can't even ride this bike three or four blocks. Yeah, imagine if I ran out of battery a mile away from home. I'd have to ride that thing for one mile. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. I told you guys, my knee is not strong enough, my leg is not strong enough to ride that, that way. So, um, yeah, we're not going to take it for that, but we can take it ev everywhere else. That one ride is the farthest distance I have to go, I, but I can't take it on that ride. That, that will be the ride that I will have to take the Rad Rover with the unit pack power batteries. Those are two 20 amp hour batteries. Now, if my original battery on this bike was also a 20 amp hour, I could definitely do it. Two 20 amp hour batteries for Magic Cycle would definitely make it, but I have a 20 and a 15. So that five amp hour difference is enough to keep me from riding it. A couple of you guys have said um, privately to me, just ask Magic Cycle for another one. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. They give me enough stuff. I, can, I cannot, I cannot um, ask them for that. I, I will ask them for other stuff, like for instance, the, uh, the Ocelot, when that comes through, I have already uh, asked if they would give me a second battery. They said yes. Um, I'll remind them of that. <laughs> so at least I have two for that one. I can take that bike out farther, right? But I can't ask for a second free battery for this bike. There's no way. Now, they have told me that I have sold a lot of bikes for them. And this is why they're willing to give me the, the extra batteries and things. Because uh, 
Yeah, apparently I've sold more bikes than than any of us would have thought. <laughs> a lot of you guys have bought Magic Cycle Cruisers. Thank you. Um, and so, as a reward for that performance, uh, they've given me extra batteries. They've given me things like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I see him all the time. He's out here running. I'm out here riding. Um, anyways, uh, anyway. <laughs> still trying, okay? I'm still trying. So they've given me certain things. They've given me front baskets. I'm going to ask for front baskets. I'm going to ask for... I'm gonna ask for things like mirrors, okay? Th those type of things are safety things that I have to have. Now, they also gave me the the uh, the bag that's in the front basket. I don't need another one. I can move this bag back and forth from place to place. All right, that was the whole point of this thing, so that I can I can move my tools easily. I need my tools. <laughs> I need that spare inner tube. I need you know all that kind of stuff just in case something happens. But I do need mirrors, okay? I would ask for mirrors, I would ask for front basket, I would ask for an extra battery for the Ocelot because I do hope to take that further as well. So hopefully those will be my main riding bikes. So yeah, in that sense, uh, they have been very accommodating to me. I, I cannot keep asking them for even further. <laughs> Oh, and they're, they're going to send me a replacement fork for this bike. I told you about that. They, they said that uh, they will send one out. It has to come from China because it's not a normally stocked item in the warehouse here in the United States. Because they don't... Uh, they, don't um, they don't expect to sell those things, all right? So because of that, they don't stock them. Um, in the US warehouse they have to ship it from China and that takes a while to get here it takes a while see I keep adding S's to the end of words you know I, I will get better because I am more aware of it now because so it's pointed out to me yeah people have to point things out otherwise you you will continue saying things incorrectly and I do recognize that because you listen to me talking every single day, watch my videos every single day, um, it'll drive you nuts <laughs> if you hear things wrong and you don't say it that way, right? Yeah, point them out to me. I will, I will try to improve. Can't guarantee it all the time, but I will try. All right, so uh, today's a nice day. It's, it's in the upper 60s right now. It'll, it'll warm up a little bit. It'll dry out. You know, the, the kid was supposed to paint the fence at eight o'clock. I pushed him back to 10. I figured let's give it a little more time to try to dry a little bit on the fence before he starts hitting it with more paint. But it also gave me a little time to get out on the bike. So we are at uh, almost eight miles of ride time now, and we're sitting at 93% on the battery meter. Yeah, doing good. Now, even level two for me it seems slow. I, I only have those lower levels because you know there's times when you really don't want to um, go as fast so you got to have some lower levels but I rarely use one and two because it seems too slow for me I'm usually on three or four yeah I, I up everything up a little bit so now I have seven levels and each one bring it, it brings me all the way up to like 90% I think I think I max it out at 90 you know when it's going that fast you tend to ghost pedal where you're pedaling but you don't feel any <laughs> you don't feel any effect of that pedaling right you, your, your legs are moving <laughs> the, the, the thing is moving but it's not really doing anything but it does keep the cadence sensor moving and that 
continues you going at a certain speed. Somebody asked me to talk a little bit about my pedal level assists and the, uh, the ghost pedaling issue. Yeah, ghost pedaling will happen for me even at level 4 <laughs> because I have it set up so fast. Um, so anything past that, the more likely I would be uh, ghost pedaling. And, um, you know, we've all wondered if we should just change out the, uh, the chain ring get a couple of more teeth in there <laughs> so that you can not ghost pedal but the more I thought about it I said you know even though I had thought in the past it would be nice to add a second one of those uh, chain rings you, you remember our old 10 speed bikes we'd have uh, gear shifters on the front and on the rear derailers because you have essentially two chain rings in the front I said, why don't we do that with the e-bikes? You know, the more I thought about it, I said, maybe they can't do it. Because if they do it, they might exceed the legal limit of what the law allows them to make a bike. I mean, it's not like these guys can't make bikes go faster. They can. But they, they limit it because in order for them to be able to sell the bikes here in the United States or different areas, they, they have to maintain the letter of the law. I mean, this is why Class 2 bikes are 20 miles an hour. Class 3 bikes are... 28 miles per hour if they put you if they put a second chain ring on there you're, you're probably gonna exceed the 28 and there are many people who want that but legally to sell the bike as a class 3 they're not supposed to allow you to go past 28 assisted unassisted is another story if you can if you can uh, pedal it right but I think it's just pushing us into uh, areas of a little too dangerous right so maybe that's why they don't do it. Let's take the shortcut. That, that's just my guess. I, I don't know if that's the reasoning behind it really or not, but probably. Somebody also mentioned too, you know, I've been talking about, wouldn't it be nice to have cruise control on these things? Somebody mentioned something that I didn't, I didn't think about either. Maybe because of the legalities, they don't want that. I don't know if it's illegal to do it because I know there are bikes out there that does have cruise control, but um, you know, forcing you to have to push down or rotate to get an assistance, you know, maybe it takes them off the, the legal issues, but if you set it up so that you don't even have to push down and this bike is assisting you, is that illegal? I don't, I don't know if it is or it isn't, but obviously there, there could be things that could happen if you're on cruise control and you don't you don't hit the brakes fast enough or something or I don't know I think if the cruise control happened and you can hit the brakes um, and it well look at that deer Did you guys see that oh he's still going <laughs> uh, I don't know if you guys can see him he's still out there uh, stop and watch him you see that guy just run across there there he is there he is <laughs> Hey, look, he looked. <laughs> yeah, Dan told us uh, if you do uh, the sound of a, of a sheep, that'll stop them in their tracks. There he is. Do you guys see him? There he goes. Look at him jump. All right, I think we're done with him. He's crossing the road. Okay. <laughs> that was the first time the deer actually ran across our path. That was fun. Yeah, now we know what to, uh, to call this video, right? See the deer run. <laughs> yeah, that just made my day. <laughs> that just made my day. Now, we hadn't seen that many deer out here, um, but it's early enough and, um, you know, just finished the rain and everything. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, we're gonna head back, head back in the area.
Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That particular deer did not seem to be that old. It wasn't it wasn't that that big. It's not a little baby, that's for sure. It's old enough. Yeah, she was just jumping around. Yep, yeah, deer are fun. <laughs> I like seeing them. I, I just never saw one run across the, the bike path like that. They're usually off to the side somewhere. All right, which way do I gotta go? I think we gotta go this way. And then we gotta turn around. There we go. Yeah, I always think it's interesting. Uh, people see me, I know they always stare at me. You got a big guy on a big bike. And then they see this guy talking to himself. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder if they realize that I'm actually recording something. I guess if you saw the, the, the camera on me, they might uh, recognize that. Sometimes I don't think they see it though. They just think I'm talking to myself. You know how you can get more mileage? Coast. <laughs> yeah. I'm not pedaling right now. I'm not pedaling, I'm not throttling, I'm just coasting. Pedal a little bit more. Stop pedaling. Coast. <laughs> I think it was uh, Bolton E-Bikes that said that. It was now called Area 13. Yeah. They had a video, Kyle had a video, said, you know, how are some of the ways you can get more, more range out of your bike? Coast. <laughs> Pedal for a while and then coast, yeah. That'll increase the range. Yeah, I don't think we buy bikes to just coast though. People, people buy bikes to, to get some exercise, people buy bikes to to get out there and do things. Um, yeah, we're not thinking about coasting all the time. But yeah, if you were if you were running out of battery, <laughs> yeah, pedal a little bit, and coast a little bit, pedal and coast, pedal and coast. By the way, I, I mentioned in the past that I don't I don't ride my bike for the exercise of it all. I ride it for keeping my knees moving, my legs moving to help my knees out but I don't do it specifically to try to lose weight if I did I'd have to pedal harder which you know I don't do <laughs> um, stop with all the throttling all that kind of stuff but use a lower pedal assist level no I want to go my distances I want to go to different places um, I don't want to do it such that I'm suffering through to do it <laughs> yeah taking it easy on the bike coasting coasting right now enjoying the outdoors looking at things like deer running across the path yeah they've cut down a lot of this uh, this foliage around us Not sure why they cut so much of it down though. Some, some of it's cut down, some of it's not. They do have to keep it under control. If they don't, it will overgrow and it'll get in the way of the path. And a lot of people use this path. I'm kidding, I'm not kidding you. There's uh, a lot of walkers, a lot of runners, a lot of bike riders. Yeah, you know, um, you see the sign blinking? That's from my light, of course. The front headlight is pretty bright and I do leave it on all the time. I put it in the blinking mode. I know a number of you guys don't like it on the blinking mode because it's irritating. That's the whole point. <laughs> I want people to notice my bike. I, I don't want them not knowing that I'm here. And I have a rear tail like that's blinking too. My helmet is on. I have lights on the helmet, on the X-Needle helmet. 
front light is on, it's, it's solid, the rear light is blinking. Now originally on the x Needle helmet, I was using the third setting, which is a different blinking pattern. Um, but then the more I thought about it, I said, you know, these are not really bright lights. They're not like the lights that are on the bike. So I said, yeah, the, the first one, when you first turn it on, is the most obnoxious <laughs> blinking pattern for the rear, red light in the rear of the helmet. I decided, yeah, I'm going to use that instead because it's, it's more noticeable. I had to run through that water. <laughs> Gotta clean off the tires. <laughs> Told you about that before, right? Yeah, sometimes I see um, a little puddle and I'll, uh, I'll run over it <laughs> just so that I have uh, so I have something that cleans my tires off a little bit. Yeah, it's dirty water, but hey tires dirty too right all right let's drop us down to PAS 2 and here's a family of ducks crossing the road uh, not as, as it's not as impressive as the, the deer <laughs> that deer was something else Still getting used to this bell, this blue bell, blue bell, <laughs> off on the side here, because uh, you know the the original Tektro brakes has a has a bell at the trigger finger here on the left side. Now that it's gone, I got to reach over to hit the blue bell here. Yeah, I think you guys on the Cruiser Pros have a little bell that comes with it too. I saw a photo somewhere somebody was asking what is this thing <laughs> it's the bell <laughs> well mine doesn't have a bell because I swapped out the the brakes here's the geese again um, so I had to add a bell so I added this one because uh, first off I thought the design was kind of neat it doesn't take up a lot of space it's just a small little thing Look at all the geese again. It's a lot of geese. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the geese leave their little mark on the ground all over the place. What a mess. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a mess. <laughs> I like the look of the geese. I don't like the mess they leave. I don't like the fact that they sometimes try to attack us. Yeah, those geese can be mean. Yeah, especially when they got little babies, they're trying to protect the babies, they can be pretty mean. All right. So, they're letting me through. We wave thank you. We get through. <laughs> yep, geese can be kind of mean. It's the one thing that I've noticed since uh, getting a bike again, how animals want to get you all the time. Now, somebody said, don't hit them with uh, pepper spray, hit them with an air horn. That actually might be the best way to do it. If you carried an air horn somehow, carried an air horn on your, um, on your bike, hit them with the air horn. They'll scare them and then they'll move out of the way. So, uh, yeah, one more thing to add to your bike, air horn. Air horns are kind of big. Yeah, I don't think they make small little air horns. Never had an air horn. All right, how are we doing for time? 8.57, I got about another hour before the kid comes over. How are we doing for our meter here? We're at 11.4 uh, miles, 82%. Now I can get up and ride again as he's painting, but I need to see how he's doing it with a spray painter. Gotta make sure he's not making a mess.
maybe after I think he's doing a good job, I can get back up on the bike again. We'll see. All right. Let's go this other way here. Yeah, I've always thought it's kind of funny. See, these guys are running, and I'm taking it easy on a bike. That's why I'm as big as I am, and those guys are in much better shape than me. <laughs> yep, that's how it is. Yeah, they cut back a lot of stuff. They obviously <clears throat> trimmed back the, the grass in this area. Looks nicer. I don't know what this water is to our left. I think it's some type of uh, drainage or something. I, I don't. I don't think it's a regular. It's not a lake. I think it's some type of runoff or something. Here, let me let you guys see that. You guys see that? Hey, it's pretty big. I mean, it looks like a little lake. I've seen people try to fish out of there. I I don't know what's in there. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't eat any fish out of there if I were you. <laughs> it might be a catch and release, that's about it, if there's any fish at all in there. Now, I don't like eating fish out of uh, little ponds and whatever. It's strictly catch and release for those fish. The only fish I've eaten, really, that I would uh, feel comfortable eating would be fish out of Lake Michigan. Yeah, up this incline is no problem for the Magic Cycle Cruiser. This is not a problem at all. Let's go this way. All right, we're gonna have to hit her with the bell. Right. Yeah, we hit her with the bell. No need to say anything. She knew we were there. She kind of moved a little bit, a little bit to the left. So yeah, it's been an easy ride today. Not much pedaling. I've been doing mostly throttling. Small amount, small amount of throttling, no S. Twelve miles, seventy-nine percent. I think because of the throttling, it's eaten into my uh, mileage. Yeah, let me see. Even at pedaling. Showing at 215 watts, but I've seen it go into 300s. It varies depending depends on the terrain. If it needs a little bit more power to get up. It, it does it, and of course that keeps eating into your battery. If you, I guess, if you were non-stop riding on the same level ground with a low pedal assist, it would be better. I think these guys are playing pickleball. A lot of these tennis courts have been converted to pickleball. Now, I don't know how to play pickleball, but I watch these guys. It's smaller, it seems, than tennis. I don't know. It's becoming more popular than tennis, it seems. And a lot of these older seniors seem to be playing it. Anyways, <laughs> I'm looking. I know you guys can't see it because you only see a forward view. I can turn my head. I can still watch them. All right, time to head around uh, where we normally come, come in from. Anyways, if you like this video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I will talk to you guys next time.